Hi everyone, uh, just rolling over midday now, so um, let's get started. Welcome to uh, the, the inaugural podcast. Um, my name's Hayden McCall, I'm General Manager um, at iStart, and I'll moderate uh, today's session, um, which is going to be a demo of Greentree's uh, 3D Live solution. Um, now I'm told by Cameron, our presenter today, that this uh, solution is a little bit like um, providing users with fighter pilot visibility. Um, sounds like pretty exciting stuff, so I'm eager to see if it lives up to that promise. Um, contrary to, um, I gather, some um, of what you've seen from your end, we're not a 60-minute session today. Cameron will be um, running the demo for around about 20 minutes, um, and then about 10 minutes for Q&A um, at the end. So. By all means, keep the questions coming in. We'll, we'll, we may cover them as we go, or we'll certainly have time at the end to cover them off. Um, so just as people are filing in the door, um, we'll quickly do a little bit of housekeeping. There won't be any need for, for note-taking. Um, you'll all get a recording um, sent through to you, so if you, if you do need to dash off, don't worry too much. You'll get a recording so you can watch later. Um, we are keen to have lots of interaction, lots of questions. Um, you can use the question pane. I'll, I'll show you how to do that um, in, in just a moment. Um, and we'll try to get you to all of your questions, but if we don't, don't panic. We'll, we'll get in touch afterwards. If you don't hear from us and you have got a question, then please just, just get in touch. So raising a question is in the pane um, on the, on the right-hand side. You've got a little red arrow that you can click on to open that up. Or, or close it down, um, and you see within there there's a questions pane. If you, if you click the plus to open it up, you can you can enter in your um, questions. And just to get everyone started with with using that, um, if you can just write at the moment, raise a question um, or answer the question. There's, there's one thing that you'd like to see better in your IT systems, um, and, and something that your IT systems can do better. And then just bang it, in and um, we'll we'll have a look at that coming up um, on the questions pane. And uh, yeah, don't be afraid to add some humour into that. Um, okay, so let's introduce now uh, Cameron Hallmark. Cameron is Chief Product Officer for GreenTree. He's based um, and is sitting at the moment in the GreenTree office in Melbourne. I'm I'm sitting in the ISAT office in Auckland. Um, Cameron's been knocking around uh, the the halls, uh, no pun intended, of Green Tree for a few years. He knows the product inside out um, and is a very capable demonstrator, as I'm sure we're, we're, we're about to find out. G'day, Cameron. G'day, Hayden. Hello, everybody. Um, so without further ado, let's hand over to you, Cameron. Um, how's the weather in Melbourne today? It's uh, lovely and sunny. It's going to be a top temperature of about 18 degrees, but we had a very cold and foggy morning. Cold and coming good. Cold and foggy, it sounds almost as good as Auckland. Okay, good, good to see some questions coming in, folks. Keep those, keep those rattling, and um, anything that you think of as we go, um, feel free to, to get them um, in there, and we will address them as we go. But let's hand over to you, Cameron, all yours. Okay, um, uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending where you are on the planet. Um, today we're going to look at uh, Green Tree's uh, workflow solution, um, including uh, active desktops, uh, we're going to look at the new kit on the block, and that's 3D Live. Now, 3D Live is currently in beta release. We've had customers using it for around six weeks or so, and it goes into general release next week. So I know there's some Green Tree customers watching today, so hopefully you'll get uh, excited by what you're about to see and something that you'll uh, be able to take on uh, from next week. Just, uh, just for those people out there who are Green Tree customers, if you already own the workflow module, you just get 3D Live. You don't need to purchase it. It's just getting added to the workflow for you. We're also going to have a quick look at approvals and alerts today uh, in the system as well. So who are we? Um, Greentree is a company that uh, develops business software. That's what we do. We've been doing that for 28 years. Uh, we first developed the DOS-based product in the, in the 80s, um, and we developed the current product and released it in 1999. And that product's been going through lots of improvements and enhancements over the years, uh, and today we're going to look at some of the, the newer things that we've done. Um, we are a privately owned company. Um, we deal through our partners, so our partners actually support our customers um, and uh, implement systems and train them and all those sorts of things. There's currently over 20,000 companies using Greentree today. 
So many people waking up in the morning, jumping into Green Tree and running their business through our system. Just a quick example of who some of our customers are. Uh, so I've just got a couple of slides here. Um, just going through a couple, of just different industries really. So Aluka Bond, uh, for example, use uh, our distribution module quite heavily and are very heavy users of our workflow module and approvals and alerts. Uh, Hydro Steerer in project costing. Uh, up the top there, Xenicare, community-based support, sort of non-for-profit type industry. Leckie's Electrical, very big into wholesale and distribution. Uh, moving forward, uh, Toyota Technical Centre, for example, very heavy users of our project costing module, HR and payroll, but also one of the main things for them when they bought Greentree was the approvals and alerts in workflow. And without that, um, Greentree wouldn't even be in the game. But for them, that was the, the real strength of Greentree compared to other systems that they looked at. Starman Farms, in fact, one of the, one of the real stories of today, the Starman Farms have actually, are actually using Greentree 3D Live and have been for a few weeks. And um, I'll touch on their story a little bit later on through the presentation. Uh, Pacific Marine Batteries, also another user of Green Tree and uh, project uh, management. So these are the, some of the industries that uh, Green Tree um, we find ourselves in. We're quite a broad and deep product, so we find ourselves quite strong in wholesale and distribution, professional services, uh, manufacturing, manufacturing, you know, all through the different sort of different service and product uh, um, project costing areas. Um, finance and insurance, IT, health, a whole heap of different areas. This is um, all the suites that we have in Greentree, and I'm not going to labour on this too long. Please go and have a look at our website. You'll see lots of information about each of the, each of the Greentree suites and what they do. You'll see a lot of customer stories. So people are out there actually using our software and running their business in all different industries. Um, so the core of our product is our financial management where, of course, you have things like general ledger, accounts payable, receivable, fixed assets, all that sort of thing. We do human resources and payroll. We do supply chain and distribution, project costing, manufacturing, so bills and materials, MRP, those sorts of things, quality control, including uh, contracts, uh, access to reporting, of course, so lots of different types of reporting options for our users, including web-based reporting, Excel reporting, and reporting within Greentree itself. Workflow, which is what we're touching on today, so today we'll be looking at that, uh, this module in some detail. Uh, business intelligence tool, so Green Tree IQ, which is powered by ClickView. Web-based solutions, so web shops, e-timesheets, e-approvals, e-HR for self-service for employees. Mobility solutions as well, so if you want someone using a mobile device to do you know, a stock take, um, to move stock around the warehouse, field service, for doing jobs, that sort of thing, taking customer signatures, we have those solutions as well. All right, what I'm going to do now is jump straight into today's presentation and take you into Green Tree. Uh, what you're looking at now is a, a typical Green Tree screen when a user's logged in. Um, in this left-hand corner, we have what we call our Green Tree Navigator. Uh, this is basically how the user gets around the system. So, for example, if they uh, wanted to enter a new customer, uh, they'd come to the customer maintenance screen uh, like that through the menu system, or um, they could search. So, there's a particular thing they could be searching for. They could actually just type in a name and search, and they find all the menu options related to the particular thing they're searching for. Most of our users, though, will use the favourites and the bookmarks. So rather than going through the menu system, they will create favourites of things that they do all the time or create bookmarks of the things that they access all the time. We also have a most recently used panel as well. So things that they've been dealing with throughout the day, they can easily quickly get back to if that's what they want to do. We're going to jump straight into workflow. So what I'm going to do is going to load up what we call an active desktop. So rather than having a blank background when a user logs into Greentree, our clients who have workflow will have a desktop showing them information, and this sits in the background. So as a user is actually interacting with Greentree, for example, if they were in one of our data entry screens like customer maintenance like there, you can see that this desktop actually sits in the background all the time for them. This particular user is having a look at, um, at their top inventory items on a graph, uh, their top customers, for example. Um, they're looking at financial totals, how much our customers owe us, what do we owe our suppliers, what orders are in our books, um, what stock do we have on the floor, estimated inwards and outwards cash out, uh, in and out the door, um, sales for the month compared to budget, so information coming directly out of the database. That's quite a static desktop. Let's have a look at something uh, a little more interesting rather than a, maybe what I would call a, a bean counter desktop. This next desktop is a sales order flow. So imagine you're a distribution company and 
you need to make sure that all the customer orders go out on time and you will need to keep on top of what's happening in the, in, in the system. This particular desktop is showing us a live list of customer back orders. So I don't need to go and run a report or go searching for them or anything like that. It is something that I care about in my role. So my desktop's been configured to show me that information. And that's live as it stands right now. Here over here I can see um, orders that are waiting to be picked. So these are orders that have been put into the system, um, that have committed stock, and they can be picked. So we're just waiting for somebody in the warehouse to actually start picking them. Either printing off a picking slip and doing it manually, or using our mobility solution which will update it live on the desktop. Here we have orders where the picking is in progress, so it's moved from one stage to the next. And then finally, orders that have gone out the door and they can be invoiced. Now this desktop is completely live and interactive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch over to my other screen. I'm logged in as another user there, and I'm just going to um, enter an order. And as I finish that order off, you'll see on my desktop that a new line appeared, 500047. And it's an order that's gone on to back order. So immediately I'm aware that there's another back order in the system that I need to know about. So it's not, again, waiting for me to run a report or anything like that. It's something I needed to know, so it's on my screen straight away. Now these are interactive, these desktops. So as a user, for example, if I decided I wanted to pick this particular order, I could click into it from the desktop, print off the picking slip, and you'll see already on my desktop that it's disappeared from the orders waiting to be picked window and is now in the picking in progress. And that is the same for anyone, any other user that is seeing a desktop like this. They're seeing live information. So that's an example of possibly how it might get used in a distribution uh, company. If we move into a different area now, we look at maybe someone in service. So we're a company that um, provides services to our customers. And that could be fixing their equipment, maintaining their equipment, logging calls, um, basically satisfying our customers' servicing requirements. Now, as the service manager, for me, it's really important to know what resources I have, what jobs they're allocated to, and when they are busy and when they are not busy. So this is what we're seeing at the bottom of the screen here. This particular service supervisor is seeing a list of resources that he has. So Beth, Cameron, Chelsea, and so forth. He's actually got a planner on his screen showing him, showing him what jobs they're allocated to and when they're allocated to. They're color-coded as well, so he can see different sorts of work that they're doing. And in fact, not only do we see service jobs on this particular desktop, we're also seeing leave requests. So he can see when people are going to be absent, so he doesn't allocate them work on those absences. Now, as new calls are coming into our uh, Green Tree system, and they can come in through the web, so if your, if your uh, customers are logging in through e-service, they can be logging calls over the internet, and they will be coming up on a workflow desktop straight away for someone to deal with, or maybe be informing those people in another way, possibly through SMS or email or something like that. Obviously, they could be coming in over the phone, so your own staff could be logging those into the system. But as a service, service supervisor, I can see that I've got four service jobs here that I haven't actually allocated to anyone yet. So as a service, service supervisor, because I've got this planner on the screen, I can easily see, well, who's available and when they're available and allocate that work. And it's simply just a matter of, yep, that job there, I'm going to allocate that to be done by Craig on Monday the 6th. And that's removed itself here and, and put it on my service planner here. Now that's also updated um, Craig's desktop as well. Or if Craig was using our mobility solution, he would see it on his mobile device telling him that he has that job to do on Monday. Now again, as the service supervisor, I may know that that is not a long enough time for him to complete that work. So I could extend the time frame just by clicking and dragging. Not only that, if I get a call from our own employees or I get a call from a customer and I want to actually create the job here and now, I can do that as well. So for example, I could uh, um, highlight a couple of days there and choose to create a new service job directly from the calendar. Uh, or in fact, if uh, Craig was to call and say he needed to take a couple of days off, I could click on there and say create the new leave request. And it knows about payroll. This is a fully integrated system. So it's taking it directly into HR. It knows how many hours he works a day. It understands what it, it means to Craig. So as I say that, it's now on the desktop. So I know that Craig's not available on those two days. So that's another use of the workflow desktop. If we now take this into the new world, now with 3D Live, what I'm going to show you is some 3D Live panels within the desktop. So the panels I've been showing you today are what we call regular workflow panels that show live information. With our 3D Live panels, they will change as you interact with the system. 
So give you an example of that, here I've got what we saw before in relation to distribution. So I've got our current list of back orders, I've got our orders waiting to be picked, and this time that happens to be collapsed. So I can expand that out if I want to, so I can see what all the orders are, or I might just be happy to see that there's 11 waiting to be picked. I can pop that out if I want to, and I can actually drag it onto a second monitor. So I'm not limited to just the one screen anymore um, with, with Green Tree Workflow. If I've got multiple monitors, I can have workflow desks on both screens, or even panels separately on both screens, and I'll update live. Now you'll notice here that these particular orders are actually highlighted in different colours. Now to the user who uses the green tree all the time, they will understand what their colours mean. But if you're not sure, you can click on the legend and you can see what they mean. So I can see that we've got some priority one orders in there and some priority two orders in our system at the moment. So the same windows we had before. Now let's say I'm a, I'm a user and I'm taking a customer order. So I go into order entry and this is where 3D Live will kick in. As I select the customer on my order, who's on the phone, you can see that I've got panels updating live for me. In fact, I've got their logo has popped up on the screen. I can see the most recent things that customer has bought. And in fact, I can see they've actually got some open quotes as well. I move through the order, and the customer says, I want to buy one of those LCD monitors. So I put that into the order, and as soon as I do that, my 3D live panels update again. Here I can see what stock we have avail available in the warehouses and what's on purchase order. In relation to purchase orders, I can see what purchase orders are there and when they're coming in and what, on what date. I can also see what commitments of this product we have to other customers. So this is actually a good example with one of our clients in the UK who's using 3D Live said to me that what we need to be able to do is we often have our least important customers port orders and we commit stock to them. Then later in the day, our most important customer comes in and they want to place an order and suddenly we don't have enough stock left. And we need to steal that stock basically off their orders and give it to our most important customer. Now for them in their current system, that was a lot of searching um, before they could actually find the orders that they could, could actually go and take the stock off. Whereas with 3D Live, they've said, well, that's a panel I need to have on my desktop as I'm interacting with the system. Show it to me. Now I may use it, I may not use it, but because it's there straight away, if I want to steal that stock, I can simply double click and load that particular order up and I can force it onto back order if that's what I want to do. And I can do it as easily as that. So I go along through my current order and I add another line to it and then I get to my second line. And the customer says, you know what, I want to buy the same um, desktop that I bought last time. So because we've got that most, recently, most recent sales on the screen, as a user, what I can do without, again, having to search or do anything special, because that information is already there, because I've decided that's often what I use when I do this process, I can simply grab that particular item and drop it into my order, just like that, from the desktop. So I can drag and drop from the windows into my order. And you can see here now it's updating. So I can see that we've got 215 of those in stock. I can see a picture of the item. I can see what orders we have for that item as well, and I can complete uh, my order as I like. So that gives you a bit of an idea of the first use of 3D Life, possibly in, in a distribution scenario. Now I touched on Starman Farms before, and they've been using um, our 3D Life uh, for the last few weeks. And the CFO there, um, uh, Robin Longmire, has said to us, and, and I guess to understand their business, what they do is that they um, grow, and they're the largest grower of pecan nuts in the Southern Hemisphere. They also deal with walnuts and macadamia nuts as well, and they distribute these out throughout Australia and overseas to different retailers. Now for them, they're, they're, because they're a moon, uh, food manufacturer, their quality control is really important to them. Um, their products are under strict quality assurance control, and they can't be sold unless they're, they're certain that they've been cleared for quarantine. Now with 3D Live, they've been able to instantly produce um, lists on the screen of what items are still in quarantine and what not, and which ones are not. They can also see immediately um, with any item to determine what stage of quarantine it is in and which tests have been passed. And this gives an indication to the user of how long it will be um, before it's ready for distribution. So this is really powerful information for their sales team, whereas before 3D Live came along, it was either searching deep down in the system to find that information, you know, many clicks, just delaying them, or most possibly ringing someone else and annoying them. So 3D Live has really streamlined that process for Starman Farms. What I'm going to look at next is imagine you're, um, you're a sales supervisor. And a desktop for you might be your current leads, um, your open quotes, so quotes that you're dealing with right now. 
um, you might have a list of your team's quotes because you're in charge of a sales team. Now you may want to refilter that. You might want to see what Amanda's working on right now or what Angela's working on right now. now. You can see here Angela's only actually got one quote in her name at the moment. And as a sales supervisor, you might say, well, that quote that I actually took, I'm actually going to give that uh, over to Amanda to look after. So again, just simply by clicking, dragging and dropping, I've reallocated that and that's appeared for her to take uh, care of now. Now imagine I get a phone call on, um, from, from someone, let's say someone's called us up on the phone. Um, so what I'd probably do is go straight to the contact screen, load that up, and, and Lisa's give us, give us a call. So I bring her up on the screen, and as soon as I do that, again, 3D Live workflow panels fire up for me. In this case, I've told the system what I want to see is the most recent communications I've had with Lisa. So in case she wants to discuss something we've discussed before, I can quickly get to it. I can also see other people who work in her, in her company. I can see a list of open quotes that we have with her company. So in case she's ringing about one of those quotes, again, they're just on the, on the tip of my mouse. I can see their current balances in the system. And I've actually got a photo of, of Lisa up on the screen as well. Now, if Lisa says to me, actually, I'm ringing up because you haven't got back to Bob. And if I click on Bob, simply on the screen, I've now flicked over here. And I can say, oh, yep, yeah, sorry, I was supposed to call Bob back. I haven't got around to it yet. I'm really sorry. So just by clicking throughout the system, you're updating these three Live panels as you go along. Um, so as I click through here, if I click through to a different company, you'll see that all the workflow panels will be updating related to the particular company that I'm looking at. And as I click through different people, they will update even more depending on who I'm talking to at the time. So again, we really we're saying to the user, you can configure your desktop for what you need to see on your desktop, and then Greentree will show you that information as you require it, which makes it really powerful uh, for our users. I get a couple more examples. If you're, into, uh, if you're the debt collection person, you may have on your desktop the customer aging, so you can see where things are at uh, live in the system as far as that's concerned. If you're using a debt collection module, it will be creating um, follow-ups and calls for you to chase people up. So as you click on each uh, one of these, you can see, for example, um, what's currently outstanding for that customer right now, who you need to call, um, what their email address is, you can go straight to email from there, and what their current outstanding transactions are. Of course, if the debt collection module has created a whole list of calls from people for you to follow up uh, yesterday, by the time you get around to it, the information may have changed. So 3D Live can show you that, and it may mean that by the time you get around to it, you don't need to call them because they've actually paid their bill. So again, you're not having to go through and search and go through inquiry screens. Information is just there because that's how you've created your desktop. If we work in project costing, and I'm a, I'm a job manager, I may want to see a planner of what our, where our jobs are at, who's working on them. I may have a list of jobs on the screen, and as I click through those jobs, I can see the information that's important to me. So I can see you know, when we may be going to complete this job, how many hours we spent on the job so far, um, what are the open purchase orders for the job, does this job have some sub-jobs, and some jobs will have many sub-jobs, and as I click through those sub-jobs, they will update the desktop as well. So again, I can quickly switch through the different things to see what's actually going on from a project costing point of view. And of course, all these are drillable, so if I double click on a job, I'm actually going to be into project costing straight away, not having to go through a menu and load it up. This is live. These are the important things that I'm working on uh, right now. All right, so that, that in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, is uh, 3D Live. Um, what I'm going to touch on um, next is approvals. And approvals works in conjunction with the desktops, but also approvals can be shown to you on the web, if you like. So if you're using e-approvals, you'll be able to see your approvals on there. And of course, Greentree can send out notifications via email, SMS messages, all those sorts of things. Now, what I've done with the approvals module, it's just a very simple thing, is I've created a purchase order approval rule. So with Greentree, you can create approvals basically on anything uh, in the system, if you like. This one's saying that as a purchase order is entered or changed in the system, if it's between $500 and infinity, this order's going to get put on hold, and we're going to request an approval by the manager group, manager group. Once it's approved, the order can go off hold and go out the door. If it's rejected, the order will be cancelled. So just to show that in action, if I'm a user and I go in and enter a new purchase order, and I choose a, a supplier, I pop a line in, I don't link it to a sales order, 
and I save that purchase order, we can see it's popped up on my desk for approval. Now, that obviously could be another user. So as user A has entered the purchase order, it's popped up on user B's desk straight away because it's now pending approval and can't go out the door until that approval's actually taken place. Now, with approvals, approvals can be multi-level uh, approvals, if you like. So they don't have to just be approved by one person, possibly. It could be as simple as that. It just needs to be approved by Frank, and if Frank approves it, it's, it can go out the door. But it may be that it needs many levels or many groups of people to approve it, and this is something that you can configure in your approval system in Greentree. It's quite flexible. You can also use approvals for alerts as well. So a very good example of that would be, um, I've got another rule here that I'll quickly show you. What I've actually said to the system is, as a CRM organisation is being processed, and if I'm in the quote entry screen, and if that user has, has or the customer I'm, I'm choosing has a debt over 60 days, I want you to prompt the user with a message. So we're not stopping them doing anything, even though we could if we wanted to with approvals and alerts or aware rules. All I want you to do is tell them so they're aware of it. So as I'm a user and I enter a quote, if I choose a customer that does not have a balance over 60 days, I simply continue on and start entering my quote. However, if I was to choose a customer that does have a balance over 60 days, it's going to pop up and let me know the fact. So this, the person entering the quote can say, well, actually, yep, I'm going to take your quote. I can take your quote, but I'm just letting you know you've actually got an issue with your, your credit at the moment. Maybe you could get that sorted out so we can actually process this quote um, uh, later on. So that's just a very high-level, quick look at um, workflow in Greentree, approvals and alerts, three to live on the desktops. So. Um, what we'll do now is um, we'll open up to uh, Q&A. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, good, good stuff. Um, and I guess I um, had a few questions come in um, during that presentation. So from um, Mitchell, uh, something specifically around timesheets um, and, and, and um, referring to use of time cards, um, maybe I, I guess in terms of the scheduling of people's time in the, in the early um, one you had. Just cover that off, Cameron. Um, in relation to timesheets and time cards, um, basically Greentree does have a time carding system. So when you enter timesheets into uh, our e-timesheets module, it can go either directly to project costing, or it can go directly to payroll, or it can go to both and be split. If it goes through to payroll, it has the ability to have a time card interpreter, so interpreting the, the time spent on that the user's done during the day. Um, so, for example, if they were to spend 10 hours on a job on a Monday, the time card interpreter can, can say, well, even though they've done 10 hours on a job, I know from a payroll point of view that that means eight hours at standard time and two hours at time and a half, and it will convert it for them in payroll. Hopefully that answers that question. Perfect. Um, and another one just from Sean. Um, just read the images that are popping up um, during during workflow around your companies and contacts. Is there any any automation there um, with images um, in from LinkedIn or Facebook, for example, or is that manually loaded? I guess. Yeah, they they're actually loaded into the system. We have a script to load them in quickly, or they can be loaded in one at a time. Um, but yes, that's a, it's a really good point. That's something that we're we're looking at uh, down the track of integrating it with uh, with things like those um, social media type things. Okay, um, one in from Teresa, just looking at the specific job tracking and, and allocation to employees. Um, to go to a job, and, and I guess maybe throw this in the system, Cameron, um, where you can track the employees allocated and, and the days allocated. So yeah, I guess opening up okay, the job sorry. and looking at uh, who's been allocated and, and where's progress on that job. Yeah, so um, this particular desktop here, um, yep, I've got a list of those jobs. As I click on each job, I can see where that job, um, from, from, a, from a summary point of view, where that job's at. Also, I've got a planner on the screen, so I can see when the job was started, when it's expected to be completed. Um, and that visual planner that we have on the screen, you can change the interval on that, so it doesn't have to be uh, a daily interval. You can actually change that interval to be wider if you want it to be a weekly interval, so you see over a longer period of time. Um, or even shorter if it needs to be hourly, uh, hourly or half, half hourly or something like that. So what's happening just on Friday, who's going to be on what and when if you're using um, you know, service and job costing, that type of thing. Okay, and if you're opening a specific job, I think was the question to look at. So you're clicking on a specific job. Yeah, okay. Yep, so I can create the job from the screen there if I like. Um, or I can jump into a specific job simply by drilling, and then I can actually get into the detail if I want to. I can look at transactions specifically, estimates, uh, any of the inputs, uh, any of the outputs, 
um, I can look at um, what makes up the sale simply by clicking on the figure. It will show me the invoices. Um, it's you know, really quite simple to, to get around. Okay. Okay, another one in, um, from, from Rob, in, in probably relevant in, in the context. Are there any restrictions? I mean, you've obviously shown that you can bring in a lot of um, different modules of the wider green tree system into the, the 3D Live and, and workflow um, area. Are there any restrictions in, in areas that can be accessed? That's a really good question. Um, when you uh, have the workflow module, and I'm just going to go into the, into the back here, this is the technical side things where you set up your desktops. When you first set up a desktop, um, you basically say how many columns and rows you want in that desktop. And we give you a toolbox, toolbox of things that you can drag and drop into that desktop. So we have a predefined list there of the things that you can drag in. If you own approvals and alerts, however, we have one called um, alert collection. And that allows you to basically get to anything that's in Green Tree. So if we haven't provided one out of the box, so for example, you may want a list of HR employees on your screen that, um, uh, you know, that have a particular skill or something like that. Because we haven't provided one out of the box, you can use an alert collection to create that collection for you and that can be then on your desktop for you. So with that, you can get to anything. With 3D Live, you can literally get to anything basically. So if, as I'm dealing with an organisation, anything that organisation has access to, you can show on the screen. So for example, if that organisation has a relationship to a customer, you can show that customer information. If that organisation has service jobs, you can show those service jobs on the screen using 3D Live. So it's completely generic. Fantastic. Um, okay, another another question here from Jenny, um, and a good one too, in terms of the workflow and approvals, I guess it relates to, can the workflow go outside the organisation? So if you've got third party um, partners, customers that are involved in, a, in a, an approval process, how would that work? Yeah, that's again a really good question. Um, there's a couple of ways you can go about that. If you need third party approvals, so it's someone outside the organisation, we have an e-approvals module and you can set them up as a, as a, as a user in that and approvals can then be um, sent out to those. So they can get an email saying, look, log into the e-module because you've got an approval waiting for you. So the answer to that's yes. Okay, uh, just a, a question generally in terms of 3D Live. Um, obviously a Green Tree customer already Gav, um, just asking when the 3D Live will be available for general release. It actually comes out next week. Next week. So, well, this, is um, a time, this is a timely podcast then, isn't it? <laughs> well, we knew it was coming out next week, so yes, it does time quite well. And we've had people using it now, thrashing it for, as I said, for a couple of months. So um, we're, we're confident of, uh, of, of and we've, um, that it works quite well now. So it's going out to general release, and we're looking forward to our customers getting into it, because I think they'll love it. So I guess on that, is there, there's a, a version upgrade process um, prerequisite, maybe talk a little bit about uh, Yes, there that. is. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, our customers will know that we do uh, quarter, quarterly certified releases um, at the end of uh, February, May, August and November every year generally, and our May one's coming up, um, as, that's obviously the 31st of May today, so our May one's coming out in the next couple of days, so they'll be able to load that on next week. So normally our, our customers will have that scheduled with their partners to, to make that process occur. Okay. Um, lots of questions coming in, so I'm just uh, trying to keep up with you all. Um, a question <laughs> from Gordon, um, just adding links to information and I guess the visibility within 3D Live to information outside of GreenTree. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a good question as well. We don't really have uh, access or links to information outside of GreenTree other than the ability to, to, to put that in as a link, I guess. But not, uh, for example, we don't show, I don't know, let's say it's um, something like um, someone editing a, a document or something like that. You could sort of link to that, but it wouldn't be shown in a 3D panel. You'd actually still open up in Word or something like that. Okay, so, so there's no place to, to store um, you know, URL links that are related to a particular customer or product? Or no, you can. You can install URL links. You can create your own custom fields for URL links, and 3D Live will show them as a link, and when you click on them, it will actually open the link for you. So you can do it that way. Yep. So there's always different ways of doing things with GreenTree. That's, that's the thing. Okay. Um, let me just... How easy is it to learn how to set up 3D Live desktops? Or will we have to always rely on consultants? And by which I mean 
um, the cost of consultants um, training material I guess coming out around through your live and yeah in, actually in, that's a really good really good question and what we've done is we've created a really extensive training document on how to do it yourself um, so your partners can provide you with that documentation we've also done a video so we take you through step by step some examples on the video so you can pause the video as you go along and up and create your own desktops so um, we've done a couple of different ways of doing that out of, um, that we've provided ourselves for our dealers to, to pass on to our, our customers. Okay, sounds very good. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much pretty much just it. Um, I might disappear, so if you do have questions, um, I can I can grab them. But let me just grab controls back, and I'll I'll wrap things up. So just as you head out of the, the webinar, guys, um, you'll get in a separate window it opens up a, an exit survey. So just um, appreciate if you can take your time to, to fill that in. Um, it obviously gives you the links um, to, to Green Tree and, and if you're interested in a follow-up on 3D Live, a um, one-on-one -on -one demo, there is a 50% discount um, for, I think, Give us a time frame around that, Cameron. Maybe you can help on what that is. September, yeah, 30th. In fact, the next slide covers it off. Or one-on-one -on -one demo, um, and I guess training and related for Green Tree customers. Um, and obviously, we are um, sponsored today by Green Tree. Um, contact details there, and some details. Yeah, 30th, 30th of September for um, the 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 50% off um, this 3D Live module. Uh, but that's a wrap today. Thank you very much for your attendance and I uh, hope it was of value. Please fill in the survey and have a nice day. Thanks all.